So I am Jerrica Glasper. I am a life and business manifestation coach. I work with conscious spiritual women entrepreneurs. I work with a few powerhouse men and personal development and spiritual seekers wanting to learn how to manifest what they really want. Like, what is a process? What is this all about? And um, I came across Neville Goddard about four years ago, which completely changed my life. So I grew up Christian. My mom's a minister. I have um, about seven uncles that are Baptist pastors. So I grew up in the church. I grew up you know, learning about the Bible and Jesus and all of that. And then I was introduced to the secret. And then from the secret, secret, it came to the law of attraction. And then from doing my going deeper down that, that path, I came across Abraham Hicks. And then from Abraham Hicks, I came across Neville Goddard. And Neville Goddard just simplified everything for me. And he opened my eyes to a whole new world of who, Jesus, who, who God is, who we are, who God is, and the power that we have to create our reality. But, um, you know, so that's four years ago. I learned about Neville. Fast forward to today, I'm learning that a lot of people do not really understand um, what manifesting truly is or or um, how to really tap into it consistently. So the results are inconsistent or they feel like impatient or they feel like sometimes it just happens but they don't know how it happened. And the thing that I've found is that a lot of people have a religious background. They have typically Christian background. That's the biggest religion out there. Um, and they need a bridge. They need a bridge between Christianity and the concepts taught by Neville Goddard. I needed a bridge when I first learned about Neville. So I am creating that bridge for people today with my first episode of the Ministry of Manifestations. And so the topic we're going to go into today is called Buying the Pearl. Hey, Tashiana, thank you for joining in. All right. Um, so we're going to dive in. This is going to be a short and sweet lesson. But I wanted to talk about something that Neville had, and I'm going to post a reference to his um, lecture that I highly recommend that you listen to after you watch this video or just some point throughout the day. And so today we're going to talk about the pearl of great price that Neville Goddard talks about. And in Matthew 13, verses 45 and 46, there is a scripture that says, The kingdom of, it, of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold everything that he had to buy that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found, when he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had, and he bought the pearl. The pearl of great price. He sold everything that he had to buy this pearl. He bought the land where he buried the pearl. That's how valuable the pearl is. And so Neville Goddard, when you're first introduced to him, it's, he has over 400 lectures. I love starting with the pearl of great price. And there are a few others. So um, this is a starting point because the pearl of great price is the secret to being a master manifester. It is one of the most powerful secrets. And so what Neville teaches basically is that the interpretation that we get from the Bible is more, um, is more historical. And he invites us to look at the Bible as more of a metaphysical, um, a metaphysical connotation um, saying that when the Bible was first created, it was Hebrew, the words got translated, it got westernized, it got commercialized, and he says, let's take it back to the meaning of the East. When the East talked about the Bible, um, it was a lot of metaphors, a lot of parables. So we know growing up in the church that the Bible is full of stories and parables. And so Neville invites us to say, let's look at the Bible as the stories being you. And that the end goal of every story is always pointing back to you and your power in the Bible. So he says the whole Bible is your bibliography about your life. Right, that's the first huge revelation that I was like, oh, about me, what, okay, what, what are you talking about, devil? And so he says that the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field. He breaks this down. When a man finds the hidden 
treasure, the kingdom of he heaven is like a hidden treasure. When he finds it, he sells everything that he has to buy this pearl. Hey, hey, hey. Um, so if y'all have any questions while I'm talking, please drop it in the comments. I have my phone up here so I can see you. Um, this is live. And if you're catching the replay, just do hashtag replay. And so let's, let's dive in. And so um, another scripture that Neville brings up, and Neville Goddard, he is a spiritual teacher, a metaphysical practitioner that was born in 1905. Um, he went around and taught a lot about the Bible, about um, mysticism, about consciousness, about um, our power to create our reality, and he referenced the Bible a lot. He, he referenced the Bible a whole, whole lot to make that bridge, and so that's why I'm doing that today, is because I want to reference the points that you need to make the, the bridge, to start to open up your mind to, to see um, God in yourself in a more empowered way, right? Uh, okay, so John 6, 44, for no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them to me, okay? No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them to me. What does that mean? Neville says that in the, so you're, so basically what Neville says is that Jesus Christ, right? Jesus, Christ is the wisdom. Christ is the wisdom and power of God. And where does he exist in man? Where, where does the Father exist in man? This, this wisdom and power of, of God that we call Christ, where does he exist in man, right? Yes. Tashiana, you said, oh my goodness, yes, love that breakdown. Yes. So, where God exists in man, where Neville says that you must buy the pearl, is that God exists as your human imagination. That God exists right here in your mind. So Neville teaches, you know, believe in the power. But we believe in the power. We believe in the presence. We know that we are created by, you know, a divine presence, divine intelligence by God, right? We um, know the story about Jesus Christ. But he says that the whole Bible is about creation, is about conscious creation. And it's it's a hidden, the whole Bible, right? So we read the stories like, oh, this is a great story. But it's a story within a story, the stories in the Bible are a story within a story teaching you how to create your reality. And so your consciousness creates your reality through the power and wisdom of Christ. And who Paul in the Bible in, in 1 Corinthians calls Christ, describes Christ as being the wisdom and power of God. The wisdom and power of God is Christ in in, in his, uh, in Paul's letters to the Corinthians, he said, no longer will we look to a physical man to look for our, our answer. He said, we're going to look, because we already have the answers, we're going to look within. No longer will we follow a physical man. We need to look it within to find the kingdom of Christ and the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God dwells in you as your wonderful human imagination. That is the secret right, right there. So the, the mind the mind of man or woman, the mind, the mind of women, woman is the mouth of God. My mind is the mouth of God, right? <laughs> so when this, this John 6, 44, no man can come to me unless the father, who the father is my human imagination because Christ is the wisdom and power of God, his father. So my father exists within me as my wonderful spiritual self, but his power and wisdom exists in the power of my thoughts, right? No man can come to me unless the father, my imagination, who draws me, who, who sent me, draws them to me. I cannot create anything. I can't call someone into my reality unless my imagination calls for them. My awareness, my consciousness calls for them. So what um, Neville teaches is to look at everything as consciousness, as the imagination. So no man can come to me unless the Father, the Father exists in me as my wonderful human imagination who sent me draws them to me. 
I cannot have someone come to me unless I draw them consciously. There's another scripture, uh, or no, there's a, there's a quote that Neville says that um, self, uh, what, is, what did he say? Um, I cannot think of it, but basically he says, the hell that we live in is when we deny our power. He said, our only hell that we live in, that we go to, is when we deny our power to be able to create our, create our reality, and we put that power outside ourselves to other things, right? Oh, my horoscope said this, and astrology said that, or I can't do this because of statistics, or I can't. He's like, no, that's hell. And what he said heaven is, is all about, um, he said, heaven is a state in which a man or a woman rises where everything is completely subjective to his or her imaginal power. That is heaven. When you realize that I must buy the pearl, I must sell everything that I own and not physically sell everything I own, but the beliefs that I put in things outside of my own power, I must sell those. I must deny that astrology leaves my life. I must deny that numerology leaves my life. And I must buy the pearl. And the pearl is to believe in the wonderful power of your human imagination as the power and wisdom of God within you to create your reality. That is, that's it. Buying the pearl of great price in the Bible is about looking for the kingdom of heaven within you, which exists in the power of your imagination and your thoughts and your subconscious mind to create your reality. And so again, Jesus Christ equals the wisdom and power of God. That is the father. The father within us is our human imagination. Christ exists in humanity as our own wonderful hum human imagination. And this is the pearl that you must buy. This is a pearl. That's it. <laughs> the pearl of great price is to discover a new revelation of who God is within you. The power of, that you have, you are the created and you are the creator and that God wants you to prosper. He wants you to thrive and he wants you to find who he is and live your truth for yourself. Yes, we've been brought up in this way, and I love my Jesus, okay? I am a follower of Christ, but I am empowered to know that Christ is closer than close. He is right here. He is me. I am him. But he also has given me the wisdom and power through the power of my thoughts to create my reality. So that's all I have. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so I'm looking at the comments here. Tashiana, you're dropping jewels. Carmen is watching. Hi, Carmen. Um, that is all that I have. If you ladies have any questions, I will take your questions. But that is it for today. And so what I want to challenge you to do is to test and see for yourself that the mind of man is the mouth of God. And what I mean by that is to test the power of your imagination right? Test the power of your imagination. There's a story that Neville talks about, and I'm going to share that with you, and then I'm done. And so the story goes that um, Neville Goddard taught this woman how to be a numerologist, how to read numbers, how to, um, it wasn't astrology, it was a, she was a numerologist, and he taught her how to read numbers, how to take someone's birth chart and do all this stuff, right? So he said that uh, the woman was telling him a story one day of someone that called her up and wanted to be a client and say, hey, can you read my chart? So the woman is sitting in a coffee shop and she's putting together this guy's chart. And when the guy comes to sit with her, she says, you know what? You're going to come into some money. You're, something wonderful is going to happen to you. You're, you're about to come into some money. He said, well, if you're right, I'm going to give you $100. And this is back in the 1930s and 40s and 50s. So he's like, if you're right, I'm going to give you $100. She's like, well, you don't have to wait to give me the $100. I know it's going to happen. Give, you can go ahead and give me that $100 now. So um, what happened was the man leaves. And then when he leaves, she looks down at the chart and she's like, oh, my goodness. 
the window that she's sitting next to is open and a draft comes in. And so before the meeting, she got the man's, you know, birthday, she got his weight and height or whatever else goes into numerology. And she came up with the chart. But when she looked down and she looked at the window, she realized that the window had blown the pages in her, in her chart back 10 years before the guy was born. So she was freaking out because she's like, oh my goodness, I gave him this revelation that he would come into some money today based on his chart. Well, she's telling Neville this and they're sitting in her living room and she gets a knock at the door and there is a courier that delivers her a hundred dollars. And basically what she had read for this man came true, even though he was not born yet. And so Neville said, did you believe, did you believe in that chart that you read that man? She said, yes, I believed in it. He said, well, then it's done. Whatever you said is done. It doesn't matter that the man wasn't born yet. And she's like, well, oh my goodness, like I have to live this way with numerology because I have all these people that believe in my charts. And I was like, you're not buying the pearl. When you buy the pearl, you drop all of that and you realize that the power that you have to create your reality, to become financially free, to live and do and be and have everything that you want starts with the power that you have in your imagination and your thoughts and your feelings and your subconscious. That is the power of God. And so I love that story because because it shows that her belief, right, the power of will, the power of belief is the wonder working power of Christ in you. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. So that's all I wanted to share today. The Pearl of Great Price. Test it for yourself. Go into your imagination and imagine something. Imagine, have the passion and imagine something and hear the inner conversation that you would have if that thing were a reality. So um, Neville says, the example that Neville gives is he says, think of someone that's unemployed and see that person gainfully employed in your mind, happy, they're making money, they're free. He said, even someone that's sick, imagine them at their optimal health. And when you're imagining, you don't want them to say thank you. You don't want them to know that you've even done this for them. You just do it. And he said, and I want you to test your imagination for yourself and for others and see yourself living your wishes fulfilled and then come back and let me know what happens. <laughs> so that is my challenge to you. Use your imagination to imagine a scene that would imply that you are the one that you want to be, that you have that you have the things that you want to have and you're doing the things that you want to do, whatever that is. All right, so drop your comments below, your questions below. I appreciate if you're watching live, if you're catching the replay, thank you so much. And until next time, I will see you all later.